In this video, we're going to unpack the two related concepts of validity and reliability so that you can both understand and apply them to your research project. Let's do it. First, let's start with a big picture view and then we can zoom into the finer details. Validity and reliability are two incredibly, incredibly important concepts, especially within the social sciences, for example, psychology, anthropology, and management. Both validity and reliability have to do with the measurement of variables and or constructs, for example, job satisfaction, intelligence, productivity, and so on. When undertaking quantitative research, you'll often want to measure these types of constructs and variables and at the simplest level, validity and reliability are about ensuring the quality and accuracy of those measurements. Naturally, if your measurements aren't accurate or there are quality issues at play, your entire study will be at risk. So you can probably already see that validity and reliability are very important concepts to understand and of course to get right. Before digging deeper, it's worth mentioning that this video is based on an extract from our popular online course, Research Methodology Bootcamp. If you're new to formal academic research, you definitely want to check that out. And to say thank you for watching this video, we've got a 60% off discount offer just for you. You can find the link to that in the description. So let's start by looking at validity. In simple terms, validity, which is also sometimes called construct validity, is all about whether a research instrument accurately measures what it's supposed to measure or what it intends to measure. For example, let's say you have a set of Likert scales that are supposed to measure or quantify someone's level of overall job satisfaction. If this set of scales focused purely on one dimension of job satisfaction, let's say pay satisfaction, this wouldn't be a valid measurement as it's only capturing one aspect of this multidimensional construct called job satisfaction. In other words, it's not capturing the full picture. Oftentimes in quantitative studies, the way in which the researcher or survey designer interprets a question or statement can be different from how the study participants interpret it. Given the nature of a survey, it's easy for these sorts of misunderstandings or misinterpretations or alternative interpretations to crop up. And naturally, if the respondents are interpreting the question in the wrong way, the data that they're going to provide will be pretty useless. So ensuring that a study's measurement instruments are valid, in other words, that they're measuring what they're supposed to be measuring or intending to measure, is incredibly important. Now, there are various types of validity and we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole in this particular video, but I do need to highlight the importance of making sure that your research instrument is tightly, tightly aligned with the theoretical construct that you're trying to measure. The emphasis here is on the theoretical or the theory part. In other words, you need to pay really careful attention to how the key theories within your study define the thing that you're trying to measure. For example, sticking with the job satisfaction construct, you'd need to clearly define what exactly you mean by job satisfaction within your study. And this definition would need to be underpinned by the relevant theory within your theoretical framework. You'd then need to make sure that your chosen definition is reflected in the types of questions and scales that you're using in your survey. Simply put, you need to make sure that your survey respondents are perceiving your key constructs in the same way that you are or even if they don't, that your measurement instrument is capturing the necessary information that reflects your definition of the construct at hand. If all of this talk about construct sounds a bit fluffy, we do have more information on the GradCoach blog, which you can find over at gradcoach.com forward slash blog. Alternatively, you can check out Research Methodology Bootcamp, which will provide you with a rock solid foundational understanding of all things methodology related. Remember, you can take advantage of our 60% discount offer using the link in the description. Next up, let's look at reliability. 
Now, as with validity, reliability is an attribute of a measurement instrument. For example, a survey, a weight scale, or even a blood pressure monitor. But while validity is concerned with whether the instrument is measuring the thing that it's supposed to be measuring, reliability is concerned with the consistency and stability of that measurement. In other words, reliability reflects the degree to which a measurement instrument produces consistent results when applied repeatedly to the same phenomenon under the same conditions. A measurement instrument that achieves a high level of consistency is naturally more dependable or reliable than one that doesn't. In other words, it can be trusted to provide consistent measurements. And that, of course, is what you want when you're undertaking empirical research. To bring this all home to a more domestic context, just imagine if you found that your bathroom scale gave you a different number every time you hopped on and off of it. You wouldn't feel too confident in its ability to measure the variable that is your body weight. And that is why reliability is so important. Now, it's worth mentioning that reliability also extends to the person using the measurement instrument. For example, if two researchers are using the same instrument, let's say a measuring tape, and they get different measurements, then there's likely an issue in terms of how one or both of them are using the measuring tape. So when you think about reliability, consider both the instrument itself and the researcher as part of the equation. As with validity, there are various types of reliability and various tests that can be used to assess the reliability of an instrument. A popular one that you'll likely come across for survey instruments is Cronbach's Alpha, which is a statistical measure that quantifies the degree to which items within an instrument, for example, a set of Likert scales, are measuring the same underlying construct. In other words, Cronbach's Alpha indicates how closely the related items are to one another and whether they consistently capture the same concept. The technical name for this is internal consistency reliability, and it's one of the many different types of reliability. Again, if you're interested in learning more about this sort of stuff, be sure to check out the Grad Coach blog over at gradcoach.com forward slash blog. All right, so hopefully you now have a clearer understanding of the two related concepts of validity and reliability. To recap, validity is concerned with whether an instrument is measuring the thing that it's supposed to be measuring or it intends to measure. And reliability is concerned with whether that measurement is consistent and stable. Therefore, validity and reliability are both essential to ensuring that your data collection efforts deliver high quality, accurate data that help you answer your research questions. If you got value from this video, please do hit that like button so that more students can find this content. If you are currently working on a research paper or a dissertation or thesis, you'll definitely want to subscribe to the Grad Coach channel for loads of practical tips and tricks to help you fast track your research journey. Alternatively, if you'd like hands-on help with your research, be sure to check out our private coaching service where we hold your hand throughout the research process step by step. You can learn more about that and book a free consultation over at gradcoach.com. Thanks for watching and until next time, good luck.